Hey everyone, it is Tanya. Welcome back to the channel or welcome if you are new here. Today I am back with another speed build and we are building an English inspired cottage in the world of Henford on Bagley and primarily using a lot of the windows and the wallpaper that came with the new castle kit. The, what is it called? The castle estate kit. Uh, this was an idea I had and actually executed on stream a few days ago. It was really fun to build this together and I'm actually really happy with how this came out. I really wanted to do something that was a cottage with a modern extension that had been on my to-do list for probably months <laughs> and the cottage estate kit actually pushed me to actually, you know, do that idea. So I hope you will enjoy this build. If you do and you'd like to download it, it will be available on the Sims 4 gallery. You can find it under my EA ID, which is Griffey, G-R-Y-P-H-I. You could also find it under the hashtag Griffey and that information will also be in the description down below as well. Anyway, this is quite the long build. So I hope you're cozy, maybe have a snack, something to drink. Uh, because this one did take quite a lot of time. It's a fairly big house. And so with that, it took a lot of time to furnish and do the landscaping. And the landscaping on this one is pretty intense, I would say. I did a lot of detail on this build. There are quite a few different garden beds. And I individually laid those out with little stones. And I think it came out so, so cute in the end. But I wanted to show that whole process. So I kept pretty much all of it in. But I did edit down this video quite a bit and it's still about half an hour of build footage. So I hope you enjoy the longer build. I know I've gotten some feedback that you do enjoy these. I just don't post them as often because I tend to not have as much time to build larger things like this. However, when I build them on stream, I tend to find the time. Uh, so I'll probably be doing some more bigger builds on stream. I have a couple of them in the works. So I think over the next week or so, there'll be some bigger builds. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, but anyway, right here, I am just playing around with the roof. I really wanted to have it kind of extend over to one side, but I wasn't liking how it was looking. So I actually move it to the other side of the house and have the bump out be over on this side instead. And I think that worked a lot better and it made it so I changed the placement of the door and it just worked so much better on the front of the house. I think it looks correct, whereas before it looked a little odd. I do end up having another bump out over on the other side, but in a different direction, and it works out quite well. But I think these windows that came with this pack are absolutely gorgeous. I didn't use the doors from the castle kit because they're very castly, but I thought that the windows could work here. And then I was just trying to figure out which modern window I wanted to use that matched the color as nicely as I could. Uh, to extend over onto this modern bump out on the side, this modern extension. And I was also really excited because I ended up using the glass like floor tiles, ceiling tiles here from Island Living over this section, which I haven't used in a really long time. And I thought that they looked so nice here. So I opted to do that. I thought it just looked a little bit more striking than having a regular glass roof. And I'm just extending this area and figuring out the door. I ended up using the matching door from Island Living here. And then there ends up being a door inside leading from the extension into the house. That's actually an archway. And I'm trying to remember what pack it is from. Uh, it, I love this one. So I ended up using that. I think it's from the Desert Lux kit, if I'm remembering correctly. And then I started trying to experiment with adding some wisteria on the outside of this build. I'm pretty sure I got rid of the wisteria in the end, though, when I just went with vines, which I thought worked so, so nicely. And then I was just playing around with some of the landscaping here. I ended up using a lot of red flowers, but also a little bit later, I'm going to bring in some purple as well. As you can see, lots of lavender off lot. And I like to try and make my houses blend into their environment. So later on, I decided to incorporate that as well. But right now, just getting some more ivy up the sides of the build and figuring out some of the tree placement. And I loved this little tree with the red flowers on it. I thought it was so pretty. It was just really nice trying to figure out what sort of landscaping to tuck in this area. I really wanted it to feel like there was a lot of life here, a little bit of an overgrown vibe, but it was also very manicured at the same time, kind of a mixture of those two things. Kind of like I was mixing the idea of this like older cottage with the modern extension. I wanted the landscaping to represent that as well. Uh, so it's a lot of experimentation here and grabbing lots of different vines and figuring out the best way to go about this idea. 
Also in a little while, I should be getting some flower pots on the windows and I ended up using the base game ones with the red flowers because I thought the red would just pop so nicely against this almost orangey toned stone that I used in this build. And of course, I was already starting to use some red flowers around. So that made the most sense. I also got a cute little tree right by the front door. I love using that one in like the corners of builds. I just think it looks really nice. And I needed to use the new stone that came with the castle kit that has little bits of greenery kind of like climbing between the stones. I thought it looked so nice. And I also covered the exterior of this lot, like kind of closed it in with a stone fence as well. Uh, I actually mentioned that I built this on stream and I have quite a few viewers that were in chat that are from the UK or from uh, the area where I would have been building this. And they ended up being like, you need the stone fence. <laughs> and so uh, there was a lot of like working together with chat to figure out what made the most sense for this build. And I'm glad that I did that because there's lots of things that you just don't think of when you're building something that's based on a different area. Uh, I got loose inspiration from it, but it was really cool to get that feedback and kind of work together with chat to come up with this cool shape and the landscaping. And it's just so cool to work together on stream. So if you'd like to join us in the future, I do stream like three to five times a week over on twitch.tv slash Griffey. So I will have that link down below as well if you'd like to join us. Uh, but yeah, continuing on the landscaping here, I really wasn't sure how I wanted to incorporate this. I knew I wanted to have a bunch of this stone out here, but I also kind of wanted to have or like more organic shapes to these flower boxes. So I was trying to figure out how to do that while still having the tile here, which is of course very not organic in shape at all. So uh, I'm experimenting with that now and adding down some more tiles and drawing out some flower beds with the paintbrush tool. And uh, then we're going to be filling it out from there. And I end up using a lot of this one little debug item that I believe is a package. Uh, it's just a version of it that doesn't have the details on it. I've used it in a lot of builds in the past to kind of frame out garden beds. I should be grabbing that here shortly. Yeah, this one right here. And I just go around and individually place a bunch of these around all of these little planters to make it look like a more organic shape instead of just, you know, rectangles or on diagonals. So uh, we get these really nice rounded flower beds and I'm glad I did this. It took a long time, but I think it was worth it in the end. It really helps with the outside of this build. It looks so, so beautiful. And um, we're going to be doing this for quite some time. I decided to leave in a lot of the process so you can see how it works. Uh, if you do not use mods, you can still place this down. You're just going to have to grab each item individually from the catalog because debug items cannot be used with the eyedropper tool. So you can't just keep grabbing them like that. You have to go back in and grab it each time. Uh, but I use the Better Build Buy mod and that allows me to duplicate items from debug. So that's why I'm so easily being able to grab them. But uh, there are two of the areas that are done and now I'm working over on the left side of the build, getting this bigger section in the front and really rotating these around to try and get the most organic shape as possible. Obviously, I'm not perfectly getting around the dirt areas, but I do fix that up a little bit later. I just wanted to have an idea of what shape I wanted to do. So that's why I laid down the dirt to begin with. And of course, just getting it fixed up around the side here. I thought it would look nicer that way, especially because it's a flat piece that's going against the building right there. And then this is the last section over on the right side of the build leading up to a tree in the back here. And over in this area, I do end up putting a like um, a drying rack for laundry as well. Uh, so I'll be getting that a little bit later on and it's not until the very end of the build I realized I added everything you needed for laundry except for a hamper. So towards the very, very end of the build, I will be adding in a hamper to the interior. But I'm just about done with lining out these flower beds. So we should actually be filling them up with flowers and greenery now. I used a lot of these lilowing bush, lilowing, low lying bushes from the horse ranch pack. I really like those because they don't have flowers on them and I like to kind of have a intentional mix of flowers. Sometimes having too many I think looks a little bit too busy. So I like when the low-lying greens don't have any. And I also use some of these overgrown grass pieces from Cottage Living. 
I added the like stump towards the back that birds could hang out in and there was that uh, that drying rack I put out there as well. And then of course getting some more stones here leading from this front pathway over to the stone area I have. And I separated that with a low-lying fence. That's the little separation you can see between the grass and the tile that I placed there. Uh, that's a low-lying fence, I believe, from Get to Work. Uh, so I used that a lot in builds, but I thought that that helped to make it look a little bit more intentional. It's not perfect by any means, but I thought lo it looked pretty well done and... Uh, I, I was quite happy with that. I'm also adding a mailbox over here. I'm going to have to play test this and see if it's functional. If not, I'm probably going to have to use a like regular standing mailbox at the end of the pathway, but I thought that that would look better. It's unfortunate the door has a mail slot in it, but you can't use it for that. So, oh well, uh, but I will make sure to test that before I upload this to the gallery. It's just, it might be slightly different. Uh, keep that in mind with all of these builds. <laughs> I tend to show the process of the build and I don't check to make sure everything works until the end. Uh, and I generally just test the things that look like they would be an issue because most things here should be fine. There's not like weird placement or anything like that, but the mailbox is definitely something I did want to test and probably this flower arranging table as well. It should be functional, but uh, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze over there. So I'll probably check that one out too. Uh, but just getting some decorations from the uh, Greenhouse Haven kit, as well as a bee box over here and a nice little chair. I added a birdhouse out here, which I thought was so cute. Um, my chat was talking a lot about adding birdhouses and the return of adding them to kitchens, although I think I forgot to add it to the kitchen in this build. But I thought it was kind of fun that we were talking about <laughs> going back to that uh, period of time we had on the channel where we were adding birdhouses to like all the kitchens kind of fun, silly little thing that we did for a while. And a lot of those particular like references and things like that start on stream. I remember <laughs> talking about that quite a bit in the past. And we even have a birdhouse emo on my Twitch channel. So that's quite fun. I really wish I for had remembered to add a birdhouse into this kitchen, but that's okay. I think the kitchen came out so nice. I decided I really wanted to have it in this area that leads out to that modern extension, which ends up sort of being just like a sunroom. It has a couple of planters in there as well. I didn't want it to specifically be a greenhouse or specifically be a dining room. So it's kind of just like a cozy sunroom. You could repurpose it for whatever you'd like to if you download this build though. So I thought that that worked quite nicely. Uh, so you can kind of decide what you want it to be. I also really enjoyed adding these doors that are open. Uh, because in a lot of homes in this area, I feel like there's usually doors instead of archways. But to me, that looks so strange and bothers me in The Sims uh, because it's not something I use very often. And I also really like to be able to see from room to room when I'm building or when I'm playing. So I decided, you know, let's make it so the doors are open. Somebody left them open. So that way it still has that showing of having doors instead of archways, but it has archways, <laughs> if that makes sense. I just love being able to see it into another room from the room I'm working on in The Sims. And it doesn't have to be open concept, just having archways I think is so nice. Uh, so that's what I opted to do here. And then I am painting all of the floors. I think I changed, yeah, I changed them to a darker color. I wasn't sure what I wanted to go for in here. I tried to do the lighter color at first and so I'm trying to match that to the stairs. Unfortunately, the stairs don't exactly match <laughs> with everything. Uh, so I played around with this for a while, trying to get the best match I could and then trying to figure out the railings and just, it didn't work exactly how I wanted it to, but I think it worked okay in the end. And then I'm just grabbing some like beds and stuff to be like, okay, I think this is what this room's gonna be. I do that in most of my builds to give myself a little layout to go by on what space is gonna be what, so I don't forget and accidentally furnish it in a different way. Like I'm like, oh, this is gonna be the living room. And then I fully deck it out as a kitchen and then I'm upset about it. I've done that too many times to count. But anyway, we're back in the kitchen now and I opted to use this counter set from the Country Kitchen Kit. I think it looks so pretty. I also use this little shelf from the For Rent expansion pack. I've been using it in most of my builds lately because it is just so pretty. I love the decor on it and the hanging plant. It's just such a nice piece. And I feel like it's going to make its way into almost all of my builds going forward. I can't help it. And then I was playing around with the idea of just having one window in the kitchen, but I, I went back and had to instead 
and just played around a lot with the counters and the cabinets, mostly the upper head cabinets, trying to figure out how to fit those in here in a way that made sense, but also felt like we had enough of them. So I ended up actually extending the kitchen over by one tile to have a hanging, or not a hanging, a uh, lower cabinet piece like to go above one of the counters and then of course getting the range hood and a corner counter piece over there and painting the walls. I ended up using the tile from the Home Chef Hustle stuff pack. I think it is so pretty and it just worked so nicely in this space. Especially since I was going for a mixture of more traditional and more modern, I felt like this one worked perfectly for that. And then I am picking out our blinds also from the Country Kitchen, not Country Kitchen, from the Cottage Living. I get those two names confused occasionally. The Cottage Living pack. I do change the color of them a little bit later, I'm pretty sure though. But uh, first I'm getting a couple of island counters here so your Sims can sit down in this space and dine and then of course changing the swatches of the upper head cabinets to match with that and getting some other kitchen clutter so you have a place to put your dishes and having a kettle in here was also really important my chat immediately was like you better put the electric kettle and i was like of course of course i got it uh, so i grabbed that and put that there i also put a couple of other teapots throughout the space and I just think this kitchen is so, so pretty. I love the view out into the, into the like greenhouse sunroom area. I think it is so pretty and I was quite happy that I placed the kitchen over here. I also made sure to get a fruit bowl up here and I'm just trying to move things out of the way and place them so they're a little bit closer together and feel more organically placed instead of <laughs> to a grid. And then I tucked the trash can around the corner so it's not as visible. And then over on the other side of the room, I decided this was just going to be sort of like an eaten kitchen, but it's kind of more like a dining room. It's in the same room, but the flooring is wood and I got a rug over here. It's pretty simple using a base game uh, table with some chairs from Cottage Living. And then I got a cute little like shelf piece over in the corner as well as some plants and a place to hang up your broom. And then this is going to be that sunroom I had mentioned I loved these couch bench pieces. <laughs> they are from Growing Together, or not Growing Together, Get Together. Oh my gosh, the names are too similar. Um, but I think they're really pretty and they fit that whole vibe I was going for in this space. I have a couple of vertical planters and I'm trying to think of everything else I added in here. I'm pretty sure I end up adding an easel because I think this would be such a beautiful place to do some painting for your Sims. So I added that in here and just a couple of other plants and stuff. I just wanted it to be a really cozy space for your Sims to relax, maybe do some skill building of gardening and painting. And I also wanted to line up these lights so it didn't look like they were floating off the glass. They're on the seams between the glass pieces. And of course, getting some decorative plants in here as well. And a nice tea set. That is a functional one from the Wedding Stories game pack. So your Sims can actually pour tea from that, which I think is really cool. And then we're moving on into the living room. I started in here using these couches from Discovery University, I'm pretty sure. And I knew I wanted to have a chess table in this little bay window area. I thought that that would be really pretty. But I didn't end up keeping these couches in the end. For some reason, they just didn't feel correct. Maybe the wrong swatch. Uh, so I ended up changing them a little bit later to the ones from Cottage Living, which makes sense. Uh, they are in like a green-ish swatch. They're kind of an in-between gray, brown, green color. And I think they're really pretty. So we should be getting those here shortly. Uh, I was just trying to figure out a layout for these couches. And something about them wasn't working. But I knew I wanted to bring in that same coffee table that I had used in the sunroom and of course getting some plants in here. I was a little stuck with that so I ended up going back outside first and this is where I'm adding in the purple flowers I had mentioned earlier. I also got some grass around that front uh, stone wall to make it look a little bit more realistic and overgrown and I got a couple of mushrooms throughout as well which are so cute. I love all of the uh, live edit objects items landscaping that came with Cottage Living they are some of the most beautiful landscaping items in the game. And this is where I come back in and I am now swapping out the couches. Sometimes you need to just like step away from a room or a build and come back to it later. And that really helps with figuring out how you actually want to approach it because I was feeling quite a bit stuck on this room. So going outside and working on that for a build really, working on that for a bit really helped uh, so just got a basket of blankets and we're getting a side table over here with some decor on it. I really love this 
little uh, record player here. I've been using it so much in my builds. It's just so beautiful. It came with the uh, Modern Lux kit. And it's just such a useful item to have in the game. It's really realistic and I'm happy to have it. Uh, it's nice to just have something that your Sims can play music off of that doesn't look like a chunky stereo. Uh, and I personally have a record player that looks very like this. It's pretty much the same color too. And it's a suitcase style like that. So I quite enjoyed that. And then I am getting a gallery wall of art over on this wall. It took me a while to figure out which paintings to use because I just felt like the style of this home was hard for me to achieve without using all of the same paintings so many different times. So I ended up using quite a few swatches of the same painting here from Get Together. And then I changed all the swatches and I believe we get a plant over on the other side as well. I've been using this one also from Get Together quite a bit to kind of go with gallery walls. And then behind the door, I added a grandfather clock, which I thought was really pretty. And then we are in the entryway. I ended up using this like bedside table from Cottage Living. And I actually, for the first time in a long time, I used this clutter from the Everyday Clutter Kit. That's a box full of like miscellaneous mail. I thought that that looked nice by the front door. And then I got a couple of these frames here as well that you can fill with your Sims own photographs and like their family and whatever memories you'd like. I thought that that would be a nice way to fill up that space. But this is going to be the downstairs bathroom. I believe there are only two bathrooms in this house, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, I think this is the only one I show, though. Uh, but it's just got some really basic fixtures in here. The toilet and the uh, tub are both base game. And, and then the sink is from Get Together. Uh, it just matches the style, I feel like, quite well. And getting some toothbrushes and a soap pump and all of that kind of stuff. Lots of stuff from the bathroom clutter kit as well. So we have the plunger and stuff right next to the toilet and that little bath mat. And then this is going to be the primary bedroom. I decided to keep this on the bottom floor just because we had enough space for it. You could definitely have this upstairs instead if you'd prefer to and repurpose this room as maybe an office or a skill building room or whatever you'd like. Maybe even a more formal dining room <laughs> compared to the one that I have in the kitchen space. It's definitely up to you, but I decided this would be a nice space for the primary bedroom. I used another grandfather clock in here, and this room is more blue than the rest of the house, but I thought it was really pretty. I love this bed from Cottage Living, especially with the flowers on it, so I needed to use that in this space. And I also got <laughs> this like cute statue over on the bedside table. I believe that's a rooster. And I just thought that was fun. I didn't end up adding any animals in this build, like any proper like farm animals. I ended up adding space for a cat in this house. And I have the like tree thing outside that birds can go to, but I didn't add space for like chickens or llamas or uh, goats or horses or cows. I think I named all of them. <laughs> I don't have space for any of that. I just thought it would be a cute little cottage here and you could probably make space for maybe chickens. Uh, the other things are a little bit too big of a squeeze, I think, or maybe just goats because they're baby goats. They're so cute. I haven't really played with those. I've played with the horses, but I never really had my Sims get the baby goats and I don't know why that is because uh, is it baby goats or baby sheep? I think it's both. Uh, <laughs> they're really cute. But anyway, we are upstairs now and we are working on our teenager bedroom. I really like how this one came out because it feels a little bit more adult. I didn't make it too out there teenager. Uh, it feels like they're maybe an older teenager. Maybe they're going to be going off to university sometime soon. So it feels a little bit more mature in here, but I still have posters and stuff up throughout the space. I love the color scheme. This bed is gorgeous. I believe this one is from Growing Together, I think. Uh, but I really liked the color scheme of the blues and the reds together. <laughs> I thought it was a really pretty one. I was able to use this red chair at the desk and just getting a bunch of clutter around to make it feel like the sim is actively living in this space. I got some more posters on the walls over here as well as a place to put a TV. And I built in a like bench area under this window and added a couple of cushions up here as well and a hanging plant and that should be it for that room. And then we're moving on into the kids' bedroom I added in this space, which is very blue. I am going to tone it down a little bit, but it's very, very blue in this space. 
And there's a lot of different interests going on. Uh, I think the main one would be Void Critters, but I do have quite a few other things in here as well. And I move around where I have the posters in this space and change that tapestry a few different times. Uh, there was just something about the layout that didn't feel correct. So I play around with it for a while and I do figure it out in the end, but <laughs> there's quite a bit of fiddling. I was excited to include the Void Critter like battle station in this room though. I feel like I almost never used that. And since I wanted this sim to like Void Critters, I thought it would be cool to include that. And I also added this cute pillow up on the bed, which is from the little camper's kit. And it's space themed. And then I decided this locker would be so cool in this space. I've said this before when I've used this item, but I had like a little locker like that. It was shorter than that. <laughs> but I had one of those growing up in my room. And so I love including that in kids rooms or teens rooms. I still have it. I painted it when I was in college. <laughs> it used to be like hot pink and now it's black and it just has all my old Nintendo DS games in it. But I think that's just such a cool, fun piece to have in your kids' rooms. Uh, so I like to add that from time to time. It's just a bookcase. I believe it came with Discover University. And then I got some more clutter on the bedside table, some books and stuff. And then the last room up here is actually going to be an office. I was thinking maybe the parents work from home, whether they work for the same company or maybe they run their own business and they work together in this space. So I have two desks back to back in here and there ends up being just like some storage and bookcases and stuff like that. But it was a little bit different, a different way to decorate this room. It's not something I do very often in my builds. I do offices, but it's usually just one desk <laughs> and Having this be more of like a co-working area I thought was really nice and a little bit different, but also kind of realistic. I feel like the last four years or so, the way we work from home has changed dramatically. So uh, introducing that in my Sims I thought was quite nice, especially because your Sims can work from home. So having a office space to do that if they have a desk or if they have a job that is more desk work than, you know, prepping food in the kitchen. Because if you work from home and you're in like the chef career, you're your tasks are going to be a little bit different than in, if you're in the business career. So uh, I just wanted to have a dedicated space for this, but this could also work for any other needs your Sims have computers, need computers for uh, working on whatever tasks they have, skills, homework, all of that. And it's just a nice dedicated space for it. And I think it came out really cute. And actually, this is where I decided to have a cat. I was like, oh, this would be a good spot to put a cat tree and a litter box. And I just got a couple other desk accessories and then I will be going and adding some cat beds throughout the rest of the house as well as food bowls in the kitchen. So there's a cat bed in the living room, one in the primary bedroom. I believe I also get a cat tree in here as well. Or maybe, wait, yeah, I think I put one here, but I also might put one in the sunroom because I feel like cats would love that space. Uh, and then this is where the food bowls go right here in the kitchen. And that should be pretty much it for this build other than adding the hamper in this space. So I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. You can also subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more and click that bell to be notified when I upload. Thank you so very much for watching. Please enjoy those screenshots and I will see you all in the next one. Just getting some plants in the cat tree you know, last minute. Thanks. All right. Enjoy the screenshots. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.